Welcome to The Branded Show. I am so happy to be with you today, and I'm glad that you're here to listen today. Today, I have Bill James back. Welcome, Bill. Uh, glad to be here, Mark. Thank you for having me. You bet. Um, and this is part of the Shepherd series again, folks. And Bill has been a shepherd to his family. He has been such a good shepherd to his family. Um, we could talk about that today, but... Um, he's been a shepherd for a group of people. It was called Father's House, and he shepherded a group of people for how many years, Bill? Oh, well, that was five years, but over the years we have uh, shepherded, if you want to call it that. Uh, we've been counseling yes, folks over yes. the years, uh, just one-on-ones for like 35 years. Yeah, so, so he's, he and his wife have shepherded a lot of people, folks. So he's going to tell a, a different slant on his story. Something happened last February that kind of changed his life. So I want to open up with this passage of Scripture. And um, for those of you listening today, it's the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Um, and I'm going to start in verse 11 through 14. These are the words of Jesus, and um, folks, I hope you're encouraged with this show today. I believe that you're going to. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not know own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Hmm. This passage of Scripture is such a blessing because Jesus proclaims to me, to you, to everyone that he is a good shepherd, Bill. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, he's always thinking about where we're going, who we've been, what we've gone through, what the finished product is going to be. We can be assured of that in all actuality. Now, life at the same time may not always go as smoothly as we had hoped. That's true. And. It is in those times of, let me say, challenging times that we really find out not only what's inside of us, but we also find out just exactly what the state of our walk with the Lord is mm. at the moment. Mm. So the um, incident that happened last February, I uh, have been an avid athlete all of my life. But now that we live in the city, and I'm not out in the country working really hard, I uh, have looked for th ways to actually be athletic, even at the age of 65. And, and folks, he is very fit for his age. Thank you. Uh, and that's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but what happened, I have become an avid bike rider, uh, back in 2018, I even went 40 miles one day, and I, I believe that I probably exceeded for the whole summer 650 total miles. That's amazing, Bill. Um, I'm just, I love being outside. I love seeing the sun, mm -hmm. the plants, the rocks, the soil, mm -hmm. whatever is out there, even the deer that run by over on the trail. I just love that, mm -hmm. and I love the sweat. And I, I love coming back home and taking a shower. But uh, last February, uh, the 13th, Jenny and I were coming out of the store, and it was going to be about 35 degrees that day. Normally that is too cold of a day for me to get on a bike. But I was having the winter doldrums, and I wanted to be outside, and there was no wind blowing that day, and it was very sunny. It was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful day. I am going to ride my bike today. Mm -hmm. I'm going down a very long hill uh, on my way to get on the trail. I even stopped and looked at the trail a couple different places and found that it would be suitable for riding that day. 
and I'm smiling all the way going down that hill. I mean, this is just going to be fantastic today. <laughs> You're feeling good. I am ready for it. <laughs> and about mm, oh, 90 seconds after that smiling, I hit a piece of ice going around a corner, swam to my side to the concrete, and immediately, immediately upon hitting, my first thought was, I broke my hip. Mm. So I am lying there on my tummy, and I'm not really in pain, but I can't move my right leg. Mm. And I know I'm hurt really badly, so I got my cell phone, texted Jane, tell her she's got to come help me. There were some people that showed up on the trail and also helped me. The emergency people, of course, had to come and get me and take me to the hospital uh, because I was, I was hurt badly. And is this true, Bill, that you actually froze to the ice? Oh, yeah, my clothes, you... my clothes were stuck to the ice. I was there so long. I mean, <laughs> and it was difficult for the emergency workers to even get to you. It was so slippery. Uh, yes, they couldn't get on the sidewalk themselves. They, mm. had, they had some ice, fortunately. I mean, uh, salt that they spread so they could get me back out of there. Wow. That they had to spread around. Wow. Because uh, it was just very slick. And what happened was almost all of the sidewalk was queer except for one, like, 15 to 20 feet long section where it had been shaded by trees mm -hmm. and ice formed there. Uh, it was so clear I couldn't see it coming. But when I started to go around that curve, my bike was already leaning. Just went right out and from my, the tires just went right out straight from under me. Wow. Uh, I told you this earlier, I was a newbie. I'm a country boy transplanted to the city. So <laughs> that was a paradigm that I have faced that I did not know you, was possible. Yeah, yeah, you just didn't know. Most of the trail was fine, but mm. you might hit a slick spot. Mm. So, you know, you never can, you always can be learning new things if you want to. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so I go to the hospital, I have to have a, put, a pin put in my hip. It's called a broken hip, but basically it's the femur mm. that is broken down below the hip joint. So they put a seven inch nail down through my uh, femur, then attach it from the side with two screws that holds it in place. And I, on my uh, return to the surgeon six months after, he said, well, you're just ready to go. You can do whatever you want to do, and I'll even take that nail out if you want. <laughs> <laughs> to which I said, you stay far away from me, sir. <laughs> but I feel the nail in there all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always going to be something that I go through. And so as I was going through this, of course, uh, one really strange to me thing occurred. And that was I wasn't having my normal deleterious responses to a bad situation that would have been easy for me to do in a previous moment. Explain that a little bit so the folks understand that difference in paradigm, Bill. Uh, well, uh, self-pity used to be my best friend, but we don't hang around with one another any, any longer. Uh, depression used to be one of my best friends, but we haven't been out on a coffee day for I don't know how long. Uh, Self-accusation, what did I do? What's mm -hmm. wrong with me? Uh, anger at God, why did you allow this to happen? Mm. Uh, those sorts of things were just not anywhere to be close. There's been a transformation. There's been already a transformation uh, in my life. And back in 1986, I fell backwards down some steps and basically broke my inner ear and ended up having to go on disability for mm. uh, a year and a half mm -hmm. because I was suffering vertigo so badly mm. that just uh, dizzy all the time. Mm. And so when that occurred, well, God hates me. God doesn't love me, mm. those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And... 
he convinced me, uh, through my wife especially, that yes, he did, but you just had an accident and fell down some steps, and mm. that's all there is to that. Mm. Uh, I probably tended to spiritualize things a little bit too much instead of just looking at things from a practical mm. uh, viewpoint that, well, you rode your bike on ice, and why would you expect for it to not crash to the sidewalk? Um, and so that was a part of my recovery mm -hmm. and actually enhanced it. And I have mentioned mm -hmm. that to Jane here recently. Well, you know, I just didn't have any of the normal stuff that you and I have seen me deal with over the years. Mm -hmm. And she just simply had to say, yes, that's right. You were patient. Mm -hmm. You uh, were not upset. You just did your laps with your walker around the house. And actually, I still have a fear of concrete, so I have not conquered that one <laughs> uh, completely. And the Lord will Understandably. have to uh, somehow assure me that we, we won't be making any more falls like that. But I diligently did what was required mm. of me in that paradigm. So I thought back over my life how there are so many things that I just simply made worse with my attitude perspective with my perspective and so why make a bad situation worse mm. and I didn't have to deal with this really bad situation my therapist said I had a devastating injury it was hard for me to even receive that notion mm. but I guess if you break a big bone in your body yeah it probably is devastating yeah you, you actually I mean I have a picture of it Folks, I just want to cut in here for just a second. Seeing Mr. Active Bill, um, and he is extremely fit, he's extremely active, have to walk with a walker was pretty unbelievable. But you had to for a period of time because that was your new norm. Uh, that was where I found myself, and I also had to have a cane. I, I had to have a chair in the shower. Uh, fear of falling. Yeah. Uh, I can remember the first time that I went down the steps here to go out to the car, and that was six weeks after uh, I had had an injury. I was I didn't think I could navigate those steps mm. without help. So um, anyway, eventually I went to a therapist. And we can talk about this a little bit later when we get to has Jesus been a good shepherd, but I went through therapy. Yeah. I've continued. I have gotten back on the bike mm -hmm. uh, 40 miles last summer, <laughs> only 30 miles and probably 550 miles this summer recuperating from a broken hip. So, you know, when people look at me, well, how's your recovery going? I can say, well, I'm not where I want to be. Most folks look at me and say, you know, what are you complaining about, yeah. actually? Because yeah. you're doing way more than most people anyhow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but those things, oh, I, I need to backtrack here just a moment. Whenever you break your hip, there's only one scripture that comes to mind. <laughs> Yes, we all know it. <laughs> yeah, it's that dude that was wrestling with God. Yes. And then he got his hip socket put out of place. I, for the, to be completely honest with you, mm. for really six months or so, had been wrestling with God mm. based off of that scripture mm. without... Um, uh, without thinking it completely through to the end, if you get my drift. Yes. You know, we somehow think we're going to rest with God and it's just going to be uh, yeah. rainbows yeah. and butterflies. Yeah. And <laughs> it's not going to be maybe something else. And now, uh, I want to be careful here. I do not think that the Holy Spirit enticed me to go get on my bike right. so that I would fall in the and ice break and break hip. my hip. Yeah. I just was a uh, country boy seeing the sun shining, and I wanted some. So I do not blame the Lord for this at all, but I know that circumstances sometimes are used by the Lord Absolutely. to take us from one place to the next. Absolutely. So uh, what is my new normal? Uh, well, my new normal is I'm about at 95%. Mm. And... 
I am going to have to work really hard to get that last 5%. Yeah, and that's that's pretty normal, isn't it? Uh, well, I'm, I'm already abnormal in regards to recovery. Yeah. So um, people, uh, this is the point of today. We're always faced with things we don't want to do. Part of life. We're always faced with circumstances we don't like. We always end up during those moments, I'm back to this again, finding out what's really going on in our insides yes. and where our relationship with the Lord actually is. Yes. I have to tell you, there have been times where I have had to say, Lord, I got to have more of you mm. to be able to choose to operate in a way that's mm. going to get this last 5% mm. back for me. Mm. Now, we're talking about physical things, but we're also talking about spiritual yes. attitudes yes. at the same yes. time. Yes, a spiritual mindset. The difference between victory and failure for most people, most situations, is that 5%. Bill, let me ask you this question while you're right here on this. Um, this is a really good part here. The Word says to choose life. Yes. For the Lord is your life. Yes. We, it's really a choice, isn't it? Uh, it is a choice. Um, you know, darkness, choosing darkness is a choice. I mean, I chose self-pity. I chose heaviness. I chose depression. The Lord delivered me from depression because mm. one day, I, one time when I was a lot younger, 35 years ago, um, I just decided to not be depressed after, after, being, after being depressed for a week. Mm. And I just decided, well, I don't want to do that anymore. And that so struck me. You, I, just, I just decided I didn't want to do that. Well, then a week became three days, and three days became one day, and one day became 20 minutes, and 20 minutes became, I don't have to choose to be depressed for any reason whatsoever. I can choose to be happy. I can choose to walk in another direction. And they're choosing life. I am then choosing life, and hopefully empowered, and I believe true, truly, empowered by the Holy Spirit yes. to choose that life because it wasn't in me to choose it before. Yes. Bill, let me also ask this question while we're in this section. You're a man of the Word, and, and the Word says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. So explain for some people right here, right now, talking about choosing life and not choosing those ways of the flesh, which leads to death in your mind. You've had your mind renewed. Explain that to the listeners right now in a, in a quick little section. <clears throat> well, there's always a feeling and there's a thought that comes with the feeling or vice versa, whichever one comes first, depending on whether you're a feeler or a thinker. Yes. And those have ramifications that step two, three, four, five, and six result in you walking down a path either to life or walking down a path unto darkness and death. So once you go down this path enough times and it doesn't work out, well, taking you turn and back up to where you made that decision and just simply analyze, is this Thought pattern, is this feeling taking me where I want to go? Exactly. And if it is not, then you probably have chosen death yeah. or not life. You yes. can just be neutral. There's a To me, there's kind of a place between life and death that's just dullness. Nothingness. Yeah. Dullness and nothing happens. Yes, yes. So back up to that place where you made that decision and re-choose. Like a crossroads. Like a crossroads, yes. So there could be some people listening to this show right now, Bill, and they're, they're at a crossroads. Maybe they've, like you're counseling someone right now that they're losing their marriage, actually. That's a crossroads. Um, there might be somebody that is listening today, they've suffered some type of injury, physically, emotionally, something. 
people are dealing with a lot of things. Um, we know that today. Yes. Maybe someone's listening today and they need a word of encouragement to do what you did, which was to choose life. Um, just speak to them right now. we got about five minutes. Uh, speak to them right now because it's obvious to me you made a choice to choose life and to choose Jesus, the good shepherd, and not go down that dark road in your mind. Speak to some people right now that may be in the crossroads. Life means life. Light means light. Yes. Darkness means darkness. Get those things straight in your brain. You can't make darkness become light. That's right. Light casts away Amen. the darkness. Amen. You know that from light bulbs or striking a match. Yes, yes. So when we are in those, there is nothing that is outside of the realm of God to be able to help us walk in the light. That's right. And to have his light. Amen. There is no, nothing to stop that other than our resistance to it. Mm. And that can be because we're determined to do our own way, or that can be just simply we don't walk in the Word enough, or we're not in the Spirit deeply enough. But God intends for us to have life and have it more abundantly. He promises abundant he life. He promises that that was actually why he came. Yes. That was one of his mandates yes. as far as I can see. Yes. So it's easy for me to be depressed, but it's uh, also easy for me to exercise. So my exercise, coupled with not depressed, becomes a juggernaut for my physical health, mm. my emotional health. Mm. When I'm on the bike and out in the country, spiritually, I soar. Yes. When I, ha I have written songs when I am out on yes. the bike, out in nature, yes. and my spirit soars and ideas begin to flow to me that wouldn't come in any other fashion. Yes. So we can choose life and ask for help to do it. Because when you've had a paradigm of not choosing life and being accustomed to self-pity and failure and discouragement and all of that, well, that's a rut or a grave, whichever yeah. you want to, yeah. that you can simply get stuck in. Yes. But you do not have to live there. God did not intend you to. That's right, Bill. That's right. And folks... I hope you're listening to what Bill is saying. We're in some deep water here right now. <laughs> because if it isn't producing and bringing you life, whatever you're involved in right now, then it's not Jesus. Yes. And it's not God. Yes. Because he will always bring life. He will always produce life. He will always produce life. He, has, he is the seed of life. He is. And he's planted his seed inside of you. Amen. And it needs some water Amen. of the Holy Spirit. It needs the water of the Word, and it needs the sunshine of the Spirit so that it can become a full-grown tree inside Amen. of you that reproduces and reproduces and reproduces. Yes. Producing life. Producing life. So, Bill, there's some people here that maybe they have, um, and you and I have had many conversations. We're going to have to have another show. I already know it. Um, we're going to have to have show number two, folks, on this Shepherd series that you know the Good Shepherd, Bill, but there's some people maybe listening today that they have not been in the Word to really know and understand this Good Shepherd, Jesus, to really know Him the way we're talking about today. And they've kind of missed the grid of what this walk is really about. And you just shared it. Life, life, he's producing life. Share that with people right now, really quickly. We've got about three minutes to close this show today. You knowing Jesus as a good shepherd, maybe some people today don't know him as the good shepherd. Give them a word of encouragement and life today. God is love. He's pure, unadulterated love. Now, 
most people hear that and they say, well, I sure wish that I could get some of that. We cannot know God unless we're like God. Yes. And if we're not like God, then he calls us to repentance. That's the first part of shepherding because the, it's the kindness of God to yes. lead us to repentance. Amen. So if you're like into self-pity or failure or heaviness, repenting and not doing that anymore is only half the deal. Because once you get rid of that, then the Holy Spirit will come and mm. he will fill that place with himself, yes. but we still have to choose it. Yes, yes. God is love. So one of the ways that I have made myself more like God is that I love myself the way I believe God loves me. Yes. Because that was another deal. I was, I treated myself poorly. Yes, yes. So almost every night I bathe mm. myself in love and I'm the one that's in control of the spigot. Now, if you know, don't know what a spigot is, I mean the faucet. The faucet, the kitchen faucet. Turn it on, turn it so off. So when, you when your head hits the pillow at night, Love yourself. Yes. Think about the person in the yes. world that you love the most. Yes. Yes. And instead of giving that love to them for that moment, give that love back to yourself because that is how God yes. loves you. Yes. He is the source of love. He is the source of life. He is the source of yes. love. Yes. He just, the way I started this, he said, well, how much do you love your wife? Mm. Well, with all my heart. Mm. Well, why don't you love yourself that way? Because mm. I do. Amen. So I had to repent. And that meant for more life, more abundance occurring in my life by simply that little <laughs> bitty action Almost every night. And choosing life. Choosing life. Bill, that is great information for people today. We're, uh, we're going to wrap up this show, folks, and we're going to go into show two for next week. So I hope today that you have heard the words of Bill, the words of God, that he is love, he is life, he is the source of life, he is the source of hope, all hope, yes. and that Bill's going to tell the rest of this story in our next show, um, because there's a lot of information <laughs> in this man of God that you need to hear. So if you want to hear this show, you can go to my website, www.markthompson.live. We're archiving all the shows on, um, on our website for The Branded Show. If you want to write me, write Kingdom Song, P.O. Box 407, Fayette, Missouri, 65248. And you know, I would love to hear from you. Drop me an email. If you heard one of these shows and it hurt and it, and it, and it brought you out of hurt, out of darkness and into light, I want to hear from you. And you can write me at kingdomsongus at yahoo.com. Bill, thanks for being here today. Uh, thank you, Mark. Glad God, to talk with you. God bless you. And we look forward to the next interview next week. God bless you and live.